Hi, I'm George Donnelly uh, with the Jury Rights Project, and I'm here today with Jim Babb, my collaborator on the uh, End uh, Victimless Crimes uh, Prosecutions in New York City in 2015. How you doing today, Jim? Awesome. Great to be with you, George. Excellent. So, Jim and I are here with you today to talk about the awesome and uh, just, you know, shocking success that this campaign has had. Uh, we just kicked it off a little over a week ago with a goal of raising um, a total of about $4,000. And we, we've broken that goal now uh, thanks to um, libertarians on Facebook um, and uh, Redditors on, um, you know, the subreddits of, um, let's see, the Libertarian subreddit, the Bitcoin subreddit, Darknet Markets, the ANCAP subreddit. And in fact, 52% um, of the donations that have come in so far have come in in the form of Bitcoin. So uh, Jim and I uh, promised you put forth the donations, more than 60 people, and now we're delivering. That's another thing we want to tell you about. Jim, why don't you tell us about the delivery aspect? Okay, well, uh, the ads went up on December 29th. In Manhattan, we've got six kiosk display ads, which are these uh, large noticeable ads on the side sides of telephone booths surrounding the U.S. courthouse um, in southern Manhattan. And this is a really important area. This is a wholesale uh, court operation. There's countless victims of the justice system being processed in there. Uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of potential jurors are going to see this message. Uh, I'm going to th throw up a couple screenshots right now of some of the ads so people can see see where they are. Uh, it, they, just a real quick, uh, let me just jump in with a real quick reminder for anybody who isn't aware of the original campaign. What it's about is we're informing New York City jurors and the New York City public of their historical right and sacred civic responsibility to nullify bad laws in the jury box during the entire month of January 2015. And now that we have January paid for it, we're going for February. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, so uh, I've put up a screenshot of, of one of the ads. This is, you know, basically what they what they look like. Uh, the primary message is jury duty, know your rights, and Google jury nullification. That's really what I want people to get away from this is to is to go home and do their own research. So hopefully we've got just enough of their attention without bombarding them with too much information to make them say, well, what is this? And then to, to sort of uh, just, just pique their curiosity. Um, this is going to be part of a street, outreach cam a street outreach campaign, which is going to begin on January 5th, which I'm also really excited about. We've got uh, some handouts which sort of match this look, so people are going to get multiple messages coming at them from different vectors. And hopefully that will will have a nice reinforcement effect, and will reach even more people that way. So uh, we're really going to do what we can to, to get noticed in this environment. It's Manhattan, so you know just standing out against the background noise is going to be tough. But uh, with you know with the volunteers that we have and these you know great ads we've got out there, I think we're going to have an impact. I think so too. I'm really excited about it. And actually, this area where the ads are, these six phone kiosk ads, they kind of surround uh, the Civic Center area of Lower Manhattan, where there are a ton of government offices, from uh, one police plaza, which is NYPD headquarters, to uh, various courts, including New York Supreme Court, um, and the U.S., um, you know, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, uh, the New York County District Attorney, even the IRS and the Manhattan Borough President. So there are a lot of people who go through these areas uh, having to deal with these different agencies um, who can be helped by this information. And what we're doing here, even though this uh, runs concurrent, partially concurrent at least, with the Ross Ulbricht trial, uh, what we're really going here for is uh, something larger. We want to kick off an end to vic victimless crimes prosecutions in New York City. The government has basically, or the justice system, has ju basically become a revenue generation mechanism uh, that uh, pulls people in uh, through the courthouse doors and spits them out into cages in prisons where lives, countless lives, are ruined. And that's why we have the highest, you know, we're, the United States is the country with the highest uh, incarceration, incarceration rate in the world. 
this is our chance to have an impact. And now, um, now that the first month, the whole month of January is paid for, uh, we are going for the second month. And we need your support uh, to spread the word about this campaign and uh, so that we can uh, raise the additional uh, $4,000 to pay for the month of February. Jim, why do, why do why do you think you know? Do you do you want to chime in for um, you know on why, like why should people support this? You know why is it in people's self interest? Um, you know libertarians, redditors, progressives, conservatives. Why should they really get in on this this effort? Well, well first I want to maybe just take a minute to thank the the generous contributors that have made this segment possible and I think it's really incredible that in a very short period of time we were able to raise these funds from I think we've got 50 50 ish numbers 50 contributors um, some people was just a couple bucks of Bitcoin other people it's hundreds of dollars uh, whatever the amount is it's it's fantastic and it's absolutely gratifying that that people see the value in this uh, like we do um, yeah, you know, this I'm deeply grateful for those contributors, and we're going to have a big impact with that money. I guarantee you. Um, and you know, this is this is sort of an area where um, I mean, the, the justice system. Most of us in libertarian circles, uh, if you've been paying attention for any amount of time, you know how screwed up the justice system is. I mean, it is stacked for pro for for convictions from 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 the get go it is it is just a factory it's an assembly line operation where they just want to bring people in the front door and exit out the back door right into the police van and take them to jail it is it is horrible and we've got i mean there's millions of people in cages in this country um, a large percentage of which are there for victimless crimes have no business being in jail and there's very little way to have an impact on this it's like what can you do are we supposed to go vote for people to change these laws are we supposed to tell our congressmen it seems just ridiculous to even talk about those kind of things but there's one element of the whole process they don't control completely and that's the jury as long as they have to go through the motions and put a jury in place that is an area where individuals can have a major impact. So before they, the government can put their hands on a person, before they can send somebody to jail, they have to convince these 12 jurors that that's the right thing to do. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that they have the power to say not guilty if the law is bogus. They think, well, he did have a joint. I guess I have to convict because that's what they told me. The judges, the prosecutors, Nobody's going to tell them what their rights are, so that's where we come into play. Our job is to let people know that they have this right. It's a centuries-old tradition. It's been the cornerstone of our justice system for hundreds and hundreds of years, but yet uh, you know, the, they've gone to great lengths to make sure people don't know about this power. So every time we can get this out, every, every pamphlet, every time somebody can see a billboard and go home and do some research, every time they think about it, um, it's a chance to, to save somebody from, from wrongful prosecution or wrongful uh, imprisonment. So to me, that's why this is so important uh, because I, I just, I'm sick. I'm sick and tired of peaceful people being sent away into cages for it's just it's disgusting and I don't know what else to do about it and that's why I I think this is such important work hi uh, yeah I couldn't agree more Jim um, it's so many lives ruined um, something like 86 percent of uh, federal prisoners in, in 2011 were in there for victimless crimes these are lives ruined and it doesn't just affect um, you know poor people you know, it, it's a great contributor, I think, for poverty. I mean, how can you escape poverty if if you're in a cage and if you're you're paying uh, lawyers and court fees and and fines and whatnot, or if you have uh, you know the breadwinner of the household in a cage? But it also affects um, you know other people, you know, not so poor people, uh, such as the the case of uh, Brian Aitken in uh, New Jersey a few years ago. Where you know he was sentenced to seven years in a cage just over pos legally possessing uh, you know a firearm uh, while moving you know between states. So so this is really this is just a basic governance, basic civil rights issue. Um, it's you know these have been our rights for 800 years and uh, they need to continue being our rights and we need to exercise them. 
Otherwise, we're going to lose them. We've effectively lost them uh, at the moment through a lack of exercise. We, we need to reclaim them. Um, and, uh, you know, if it wasn't for this uh, inherent power to nullify bad laws through the jury box, you know, if jurors were punished for uh, rendering uh, verdicts that, that judges or prosecutors or, or members of the public disagree with, then we would have kangaroo courts, you know. So this power is the only thing that, that, that gives the justice system any kind of validity or credibility. Uh, and it's really the difference, it makes the difference between, uh, you know, Orwellian kangaroo courts and, and you know, serious uh, tribunals of justice. That's the truth. And, you know, I think what also makes it really interesting is that uh, a single juror has enormous veto power. That one person, you don't need to convince 50%, you don't need to win the election, you don't need to have a candidate in there, you don't need to have some legislature passed, you don't need to do any of this. You need one person with a conscience to say, uh, that's BS. I'm saying not guilty. You know what? I don't care if he did water his lawn when he shouldn't. I'm saying not guilty. Or I don't care if he didn't water his lawn when he shouldn't. Or or so what if he if he sold raw milk? Or so you know, it's like so many different BS crimes. Um, you don't need a whole bunch of people. You just need one. So you know, and that's that's so exciting to to say. Like, look, it's just it's just a single person. Um, that has that enormous veto power. So I think when people realize that, they're kind of surprised. They're like, what? You mean I could sit on a jury and I don't even have to, you don't even have to convince the other jurors. You can just sit there and be like, no, not guilty. You don't have to say why he's not guilty. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to convince the other jurors. You just say, didn't make his case. You know, not guilty. You know, and sit there. <laughs> That's all you have to do to send a peaceful person back to their family instead of to a cage. That's inc that's that's a big deal. It really is. And when people do that over and over again, prosecutors get tired of losing, and so they stop prosecuting those cases, and they'll redirect their uh, resources to real crimes. You know, um, and that that's that's how uh, legislators got the signal. Um, to stop uh, alcohol prohibition in the 1920s, you know, uh, that's one way that people sent a signal to uh, end uh, slavery, you know, in the 1850s with the, with the uh, fugitive slave laws. So um, this is a really powerful mechanism of of our republic. Uh, it's a really powerful rec mecha mechanism for ensuring justice, real justice. And uh, it's, it's simply important that it be exercised uh, or else the power is lost and our justice system loses all credibility. And that leads, you know, you see when a public institution loses cr uh, credibility, like the police uh, now, uh, to a certain extent, it can lead to um, vigilantism and, uh, you know, violence and whatnot. So it, it's critically important to protect the integrity of these institutions. Or it also, you know, it also you know, as people lose faith in them, I mean, let's face it, anybody that has experience with the justice system doesn't have any faith in it. I don't, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty bad. I mean, it is really bad. And if people, you know, want to have a justice system, you know, that's worthy of, of respect, um, you know, there, there have to be changes in there. And that change will not begin at the next election. That change will begin from the bottom up through the individual, you know, people of the community and that the first place that voice is heard is in the jury box um, so that message has to go up to the top I mean we've just look at New York right now yeah the police lost a lot of credibility um, and but look at the way they had to had to sort of back off and they said well wait a minute let's 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 stop all the harassment and let's focus on crimes right now <laughs> So, uh, I mean, New, New York, at least for the moment, is getting a, a beautiful respite of harassment from the NYPD, uh, from what I've read. So, um, you know, they when they have to respond to pressure, they have they can't just ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, and because there will be there will be backlashes. That's right. So uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, thanks for listening to this or uh, watching this video. Uh, we, again, really appreciate your support for this project so far. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to have a big impact 
Uh, to get updates about the project, what's going on, please visit uh, juryrightsproject.com slash NYC. Uh, all the information about this project is there. Uh, you can sign up for email updates. We'll, we'll keep you informed about what's going on. And if you'd like to uh, join the campaign through a contribution or uh, by joining the pamphleting, uh, the street pamphleting, or uh, if you'd like to organize a chapter of the Jury Rights Project or just learn more about your jury rights, um, juryrightsproject.com is a good place to start. Thanks, Jim. Okay, thank you.